What is up, you sexy nerds? I am Wildfire One. You are watching and listening to Nerds New Sexy Entertainment, the podcast. This is episode 154, and with me today is J Mac. Hi. Hi. I'm that, back. That's just have you know I've noticed every time I introduce you, it's always like it's never like J Mac or like every people like other people like tend to like exert exert their name. You're just like J Mac. <clears throat> Hi. And I like it. I like it. That's your thing. <laughs> and I'm an alcoholic. And I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Our podcast topic today is going to be something a little more serious. Uh, I've been wanting to talk about this because it's been kind of a problem throughout the years in, in one way or another, and it's toxic fandom. Now, what is toxic fandom? It's literally a fan that goes too far. You're being You're being unhealthy for yourself or someone else. What would you say a good example of toxic uh, fandom? Uh, oh what, a, gosh, what a good example like, that would be. God, there are so many. I could like there. There's just a long list. <laughs> so Oof. many fandoms have gone just completely toxic lately. Yeah, there's yeah, and I mean, and I'm I'm when I say that it, there's there's that's you can't get that mistaken for like a lot of people have forsaken Blizzard. Yeah. But they did that to themselves. Yeah, Blizzard did that to themselves. Like, I, I think of a toxic fandom as people who um, like a show but are toxic towards anyone else who doesn't like the show yes. in the quote-unquote right way. You just said what I was hoping you'd say. Yes. Um, the biggest example I can think of and the one that keeps coming to my mind is um, it's the fandom for a show called Steven Universe. Okay. And it's supposed to be this show about you know inclusivity and like being kind to one another and, like, you know, accepting yourself for who you are. But it has one of the most toxic, vicious fandoms in the entire fucking world who almost drove an artist to suicide because she drew a character skinnier than she is in the show. Oh, wow. Purposely or just just by accident? Purposely. Okay, well, I mean, it's her character. She can draw it how they want to draw it. It's, but that's... Yeah, it's her art. That's a good a good example of toxic fandom to where it goes overboard to where something you say or do something where it's gonna hurt someone's mental well being or even their physical well being. Like like J Mac just said, it almost drove this person to suicide. How bad was that in that situation? Oh, it was pretty bad. Like even the creators of the show itself came out and said, Knock that the fuck off, that's unacceptable. And I heard like, I I heard Steven Universe was an actual I never got to see it myself. Uh heard a lot of good mm -hmm. things. I heard it's an amazing show. Had yeah, a lot I've, of cool stuff, but it kinda went it's downhill. It, it's an amazing show that shoots itself in the foot. Yeah. Well most most amazing shows do that, unfortunately, from time yep. to time. Uh not every not every show goes off like Supernatural did. Mm hmm and if you hate Supernatural, then I'm coming for you. There's an oh. example of toxic, <laughs> toxic fandom. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and anyone can get that way. It's okay to love something, but it's not okay to love something to the point where you're going to do someone else harm in one way Absolutely. or another. Absolutely. So I know this person in real life. I'm not friends with them anymore because they threatened to stab me. <laughs> um, I wish I didn't know who you were talking about. You, oh, you do know. I who do I'm know who about. you're right. talking about. So he loves Dragon Force. He has even met Dragon Force. He has gotten behind the scenes and spoken to Dragon, uh, like the members of the band. He goes out of his way to search for people who hate Dragon Force so he can get mad at them. And the members of Dragon Force have even told him to not fucking do this. They told him directly to his face to not fucking do that. That it's okay for people to not like Dragon Force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that seems, that's like, that's not a big deal. Like, it's okay not to like something. Yeah, Just he cause, actually assaulted a co-worker at work once. That's cuckoo. That person didn't like Dragon Ball. Yeah. Wow, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. So, yeah, that sucks. Like, like that kind of, that kind of action, you, you shouldn't go out of your way just because someone doesn't like what you like. Everyone, what's that, what's that old saying? Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. But I think we've all known someone who will look at you and go, you like that? That makes you stupid. You know, that's a bad exa a bad way of putting it, but you get what I mean. Like, there's going to be someone, you say something like, oh, you know what? I liked Kingdom Hearts. And they're going to be like, oh, Kingdom Hearts is fucking stupid. You're fucking stupid for liking that. You totally should play Final Fantasy VII. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
But we, I mean, I think we all, I think we all know someone that's like that one way or another. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, if you look at it, uh, the console wars, God damn. Like anyone who is deeply invested in Xbox versus PlayStation, <laughs> they are so toxic. <laughs> Yeah, and it gets pretty bad. Like I, I like to joke around. I have I have family members and friends that are like Xbox fanatics, mm-hmm. and I'm like, yeah, that's the poor man's PlayStation. That's what I say yeah. as a joke, but I don't mm-hmm. really mean it. They're all fu- you know what? Like I've said a thousand times on this on the show is if you like something and you have a fandom to it and it's something you enjoy mm-hmm. and it brings you joy in life, then it's nothing wrong with it. If you're a PC player, if you're on a console, yeah. if you're on a what have you, it is what it is, and uh, it's fun. Yeah. No matter what, you're probably playing the same game anyway. Just yeah. uh, Another form of toxic fandom is when, like, the fans start just turning against the creators. And, like, not even just against the creators, but, like, anyone involved in the project itself. Like, the biggest example, and I hate to say it, but the, the Star Wars fandom attacking Kelly Marie Tran for what were really the mistakes of Ryan Johnson. Hmm. Um, and causing Kelly Marie Tran to just delete all her, like social media accounts she was the actress who played rose tico in oh. uh but people were attacking the actress rose tico for or the actress uh kelly marie tran for her for the character that ryan johnson wrote yeah and that's just that's too bad and that's a, actually a pretty mm-hmm. decent like and i'm i'm i can i'm a pretty big fan of star wars like i will mm-hmm. defend star wars as much as i can without becoming hostile because there's no reason for that negativity to come out in any situation over any type of franchise depending on it doesn't even matter what kind of fan you are you know i'm gonna beat you up because you don't like han solo no it's it's cool like just be Mm. a human being if you like it you like it if someone likes it let them like it whatever yeah and i think i think there's a lot a lot of the problem is there's a there's there's a lot of elitism oh my gosh yes in uh in in certain fandoms like if you know mm-hmm. oh my god i got th- and it's okay like if you got like j flow um uh, he has a tattoo of the uh the anti uh possession symbol from supernatural on his shoulder either way my point is is that like if you like it like it enjoy it mm-hmm. but if you don't agree with someone liking something let them be mm-hmm. i can't stand paul feig from ghost the guy who did ghostbusters uh 2016 oh yeah uh, oh. I think I personally think he's a piece of shit, but it was because his actions, not because of my, not because of the fandom. Well, yeah, a little because of the fandom, um, but still, it's not toxic. I'm not going to go out yeah. and attack the guy. And it it's weird lately with like how, because I've started noticing that a lot of like creators like when they make something that they know is a stinker, they know it's gonna fucking bomb. They will weaponize certain parts of the fandom to shield themselves from criticism yeah they will they'll 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 literally put something out there for the for the the fan the tox the toxic fandom to go out mm-hmm. in the way of, of shield from the bullshit and you yeah, know like, like and i hate to say it because like it's gonna make me sound like a bad person but a lot of these creators will like try to like they'll they'll know their movie's shit so they'll advertise it as a feminist icon film because then you can't criticize it. Oh, you can, but then you're yeah. a bigot. Then you're a sexist. Then you're mm-hmm. a bigot. When it's but, really, it's just like, no, it's just a bad film. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're using feminism as an excuse now. And I hate but to sh- say this, but Ghostbusters 2016 mm-hmm. was a great example of that. Exactly. That's actually what reminded me of it. Because mm-hmm. like, then you have fans of, that, of Ghostbusters 2016 who were just toxic to anyone who uh, didn't like it, regardless of the reasons why, saying, no, you just don't like it because you're a sexist. I know better than you. Yeah, and it's not that. It's just, was a shitty movie. I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but I kind of want to make love to you tonight. (laughs) The the perfect movie. That was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you guys tell us otherwise, we will find you. (laughs) And knock on your door and and tell you the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can tell us to fuck off, and then we'll. I'm not a superhero. I'm a Latter Day Saint. And then we'll start acting in a porn movie and get in over our heads <laughs> and just reenact the whole plot. Reenact. In real life. A lot of like the fandoms, like for it, it's really weird. Like so, a lot of the fandoms for like these really cutesy shows, like Steven Universe, My Little Pony. I was just thinking um, My Little Pony. What? Uh, 
the the new She-Ra. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, the new She-Ra, especially. I, I remember reading about some of that. Like the fandoms get just incredibly toxic, and it's weird when you look at the show itself because the shows like preach like inclusion and diversity and like. They have this good Un- message, and I understand I like, a person for who they are. Yeah, like, don't I judge feel them. Like to me, it's partially because it's preaching to a choir who already believes that they are these moral good paragons. But also, I think it demonstrates to me that these messages that these shows have fall on deaf ears. Um, the the people who like these shows don't like them for the messages. They like them because I don't know. They want oh, well. well Will she uh, marry Katra? Oh, will the, will she ask her to the prom? Which is a real episode, and it was a stupid episode hmm. in a stupid show. I can't say I've never seen. I've never seen the, the new Shira. So yeah, it's stupid. It, okay. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Lately, I've noticed a trend of people trying to push, like th- they'll be quote unquote anti gatekeeping, right? But then they will gatekeep their fandoms. To like to such a heavy extent that it's kind of disgusting. Oh, explain, uh, elaborate. Let's say like the Shira fandom. They're very, they were very against gatekeeping. Like mm-hmm. they, you know, they they you know believe that the original Shira was a was like for men and like for the male gaze or whatever, and that like they'll they'll say this isn't for you. Yeah. Um. It's like okay, fine, but you don't have to be toxic about it. Like. You don't like you don't have to gatekeep your fandom from anyone who was a fan of She-Ra before and now this new She-Ra comes out and they don't like that. That they're still fans of She-Ra. You can't say they're no longer fans of She-Ra just because your She-Ra is the She-Ra that you like. And mm-hmm. that makes sense. Um yeah, okay. well, you're not or they'll be like you're not a real She-Ra fan. Mm-hmm. You just liked looking at titties. Yeah, you know what? That's that's kind of a that's a dumb response in my opinion. Like Mm-hmm. You're not a she like like you just said. You're not a fan of this. You're not a fan mm-hmm. of X because you you don't like what I put out. That's like you know a good example is the new the new He Man uh, with Kevin Smith the Kevin Smith He Man. Like I can't stand it. Mm-hmm. And that's like telling me oh you were never a fan of He Man to begin with, which is bullshit. I grew up on He Man, so yeah that makes sense. I get what you're saying now. And oh oh my gosh, it's funny because like I I I wanted to like figure like think of like something talk. Like from a with a toxic fandom perspective from He Man, mm-hmm. but that show just fell off so fast. Yes, that, like, have you met a fan of the new uh, He Man? I I've read about them. I've I've seen yeah. I've seen shit I've on met, Twitter, but I've never met these people. Like, yeah, I've met one, and that's it. <laughs> I take it back. There was one person I talked to that said they they thought it was okay, but uh, uh, uh like, hmm. I just I can't I did I hated it and it's okay and like I said in that podcast it's okay to like it if you like it you like it that's cool but it's just not me it's not nothing makes sense to it from someone who mm-hmm. is from that perspective and and then sees all the lies and bullshit that happened with with Kevin Smith and all the drama that he tried to deflect and and nah, it's it's just it was just bad I'm sure that there was some toxic fandom that we have not seen mm-hmm. on He Man that. You know, because Twitter is a giant, giant universe with its own people. <laughs> yeah, no, so. Twitter, like, artists, show creators, showrunners, game developers, if you ever happen to listen to this podcast, do not listen to Twitter. It is not a real place. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a fake universe for fake bullshit. Oh, God, that's that's hilarious. <coughs> Except for like, the people that go to Nerds and New Sexy on Twitter. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is not a real place. If you ignore them, they cannot have any social power over you. <laughs> yeah, if, if that's all you got to do. Like, if someone's like, yeah. I hate XX and X, and it's something that really bothers you, if you respond to them, guess yeah. what? You just gave them, the, they gave them what they wanted. They wanted you to to come back at them like that. So now it becomes an argument. Mm-hmm. So if you just... Ignore them. Like, I've always been kind of fascinated at, like, how the, like, toxic fandoms form. Because, like, you know, you'll get, you'll have a fandom, right? And it, it'll be, like, you know, at first it's kind of small and they're a good fandom. Like, you know, very wholesome. Like, sharing memes, just laughing at stuff. Like, enjoying the thing together. And then as it grows, like, I, like, 
I've always wondered like where that critical point is where when, it becomes what's that toxic, point where yeah. it becomes taught to- yes where it metastasizes into cancer where, where it where it becomes when it comes from like a mogwai to a gremlin yeah yeah um that's actually a good point like what drives someone to toxic fandom like what drives them mm-hmm. mentally to that point um i i mean there's a lot of things i have a lot of passion for a lot of things that i love mm-hmm. that i'm a fan of but i don't think i would be like i would take a bullet or i would shoot someone for that that just that just seems crazy to me some people just take things to the point where i you know if you don't agree with me then you're the you're the enemy and here, here's an example, D and D. Oh, okay. D and D has always been like it has always been this like very open and, inclu- and inclusive thing. Like the it was this it was the game played by social outcasts. Oh yeah, who I, were just back when I was a kid who would melt if like a girl came to the table. They would welcome her with open fucking arms. Anyone, a girl, yeah. guy, it didn't matter. Nerds love everyone in the D and D table. D and like finding people who wanted to play D and D was a tough. Thing back in the day yes and it was like the exploded. underground it was like the fight club no one talked yeah, and about now it's fight exploded club. into popularity mm-hmm. and it seems that like you know you get these fans who come in who aren't they're, they're very casual fans like and they like they they probably don't even really play D. they they just like you know enjoy watching like you know critical role and there's no problem with that mm-hmm. there's no problem with like you know enjoying D from a distance but then you get these people who are like, well, I don't like some of the things that are in D&D. Therefore, even though I don't play D&D myself, therefore, all of D&D has to change. And I feel like that's where the toxicity comes from. It's these toxic, it's like the casual enjoyers who, you know, may enjoy it from a distance, but then start to have their own gripes with the thing that they only casually enjoy or like no. marginally pay attention to. You might be on to something there because if you think then, about it, the mm-hmm. fans of all these other fan, the, the ones that get crazy from the, the newer like reboots of other shows, that's generally it. Like they're, they're the younger people who never saw the original mm-hmm. and, and, and are just judging it because they like this and that's it. And mm-hmm. could continue, continue. You're on to something. Yeah. So like, and then at the other end of the spectrum, you have the people who are such diehard fans that, um, you know, and we, we talked about this a little earlier, such diehard fans that they hate anyone who doesn't like the, sh- like the thing in the way they like it. Yeah. And so then once the fandom reaches this critical mass of where you've got your like really hardcore diehards and then these really casual people and then it clashes, I feel like that's kind of when the toxicity happens. Because then you actually get all this like infighting, and then like usually the bigger group, the casuals, push out the hardcores because the hardcores get sick of it, and they're like, "Fine, we'll move on to something else." And then the the peop- the toxic people just the, the the bigger toxic group stays. And I'm not saying there's not anything wrong with casually liking something as long as you're not toxic about it. Like I casually like well a lot of things, but I would never dare to say. This thing that I casually like and have really limited interest in should change itself to fit what I want. There was this one pic, uh, picture I saw once. It was like, super death tacos. And this girl like standing out there, these are the best tacos ever. And then like like later you see that same place, but it's like, ultra generic bland tacos for normies. And like the same girl's like unhappy and this girl, this other person's chastising her like, well, why are you upset? It appeals to more people now. It's just like, yeah, but the, like it didn't need to. It had its fans. Yeah. And that's also why I say, like, don't, like, for de- developers and, like, showrunners and stuff, don't listen to, like, Twitter and stuff. Like, don't, like, because a lot of those people don't like your show in the first place and they want your show to change so that they will like it. Well, there's also people out there mm-hmm. that, that, there are all those people out there that just, don't want anything to work they just they're not happy with anything so yes. it doesn't matter what you do it's not they're still going to get on and yeah. complain they, they live they, to get out their their keyboard and just mock you yeah they live to down a, a gallon of pickle juice every time someone else is happy yes and and those you're never one of the things i learned you know throughout life and it was one of those hard hard things to learn uh is that you're never going to make everyone happy all the time mm-hmm and you're just uh, yeah. going to have to deal with that. Yeah, and I'll, 
I mean, maybe that even is a factor in it, because I feel like a lot of the more toxic fandoms also are with shows that are trying to make everyone happy. Like, they're trying to be, like, people pleasers, obviously. And then you have the other side of the spectrum, like shows like Star Wars, like we were talking about the movie, the, the yeah. sequels, where they, just, they were just shit shows to begin with. Yeah, they were make like... Like, and I, I, I honestly have... Like, you know, if Ryan Johnson wants to make his own Star Wars spinoff, go for it, Ryan Johnson. And I feel like a lot of the toxicity comes from these people who have unrealistic ideas that the world should cater to them. What makes something like that wrong? Because there has been, there has been, like you said, harassment to the point of people wanting to commit suicide or mm -hmm. doing bodily harm to themselves or even yeah. fans that would, would go out of their way to, like, send yeah. death threats. Yeah, and it's just like, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that they... Number one, you don't have to like everything. No. Not everything has to be something that you're, you're going to like. Like, you, Dark Souls doesn't have to change itself to, for you to like it. That's if a good you don't example. Like Dark Souls, if you don't like Dark Souls, that's fine. Don't play it. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to there play it. other games that are made for you. Are you a first-person shooter person? Play a first-person yeah. shooter. Yeah, like, we live in an, in a time where, like, back in the day, you had, you know, your handful of basic TV channels, and you, you kind of just had to watch whatever was on. Mm-hmm. Now we have so much choice that there is really, really no excuse for you to be toxic about something not being exactly to your liking, because you can always go find something else that's closer to your liking. Yeah. Again... Uh, mm -hmm. he says being toxic it's okay to be disappointed in something because yeah, we've been disappointed like, in something mm -hmm. several times yeah there, there's a definite line between being disappointed yes. and being toxic yes a good example would be god damn it I'm so mad I'm going to go out to this person's house and shit in their lawn <laughs> yes putting like and I hate the words I really do hate to say toxic fandom in in a sentence because fandom is supposed to be like being a fan of something, being a nerd, having passion for something is supposed to be a mm -hmm. good thing, right? Yeah. It's supposed to be something that we can all kind of get together and be a community and enjoy together. You know, I like this game. You like this game. Ah, oh, yay. We fucking got that in common so we can be friends, you know, or just nerd out and talk about something. Mm -hmm. and. Instead of, you know, and instead of like, I you know, I like this part because this, this, and this. And J-Mac goes, I like this part because this, this, and this. Your idea, that is stupid. I don't, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, Wild, why why the hell do you like, why the hell did you like um, the live action Cowboy Bebop more than I did, huh? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, the show Ruby. I heard it, of, it, I've heard some stuff about that, but go on. Its fandom is one of the most weirdly toxic fandoms in so many different ways. Like, it's just got, like, all these little toxic pockets in it. Like, for some reason, like, the the shippers. Oh, my God, shipping. Ugh. Prepare to get hate mail. But Bumblebee is not one of the intended ships if you look at the show. Get over yourselves, Bumblebee shippers. I have no you idea can... what you're talking about. I've never Sorry. seen Ruby. It's okay. So, it's a lesbian ship. Okay. Between these two characters. I mean, I wouldn't mind it happening if they were actually written as lesbians, but, like, they're not. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> these people will bully anyone who disagrees with their uh, sacred cow of a ship. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. I, I Oh, gosh. I used to be a part of the toxicity. Really? Like, Ooh. Yeah. Like, I would be mad at people for missing details in the story and then, like, making entirely wrong predictions that I could tell were, like, very wrong, like, things if you were paying attention. And I would get upset about that. Like, it was bad. I was, a, I was a little keyboard warrior back in the day. Oh, shit. You know, like, but did you get to the point where you were like, I'm all get you, He-Man? <laughs> No. Okay, well, it wasn't that toxic. It was just... Oh, but I was a dick about it. You know, I think a lot of people out there, it, their pride gets in the way, and they won't even admit that. You know, I was, you know, I would, like you said, I was a dick about it. Not a lot of people mm -hmm. will say that. 
A lot of people will yeah. go, well, you know, I might have been in the wrong. I might have been an asshole. So, uh, yeah, I, I had heard vaguely about Ruby. It's such a weird thing because, like, the show's, I'll be honest, it's a little bit mediocre, but I like it. What about, uh, like, something like Teen Titans Go? They're fans. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, no. Oh, God. There are fans oh. who don't work for Cartoon Network. Oh, no, oh, <laughs> fuck, dude. There's a whole, there's a whole, like, if anyone's watching this that likes that, there's a whole group of people that just <coughs> fell over right now. Oh, the original Teen Titans was great. Teen the Titans Go was just The original meme, Teen Titans like, was great. It's them trying to be meme bait and it's and failing miserably. It's It's bad jokes and, like, stupid humor and yeah teen titans go was just no bueno like if you liked it good for you but i it it if you had grown up on the original teen titans the, the teen titan teen titans go was just a disappointment is there anything else you feel like you want to talk about as far as that as far as toxic fandom and or any final words not really it's good to have a be a, be a fan of something but there is such a thing as too much and there's such a thing where just with anything you can go overboard and make it bad. I mean, I've I've seen forums where people were like, "Kill yourself," and I'm like, "Yeah, what? Huh? <laughs> what? We're just talking about marbles, you know, or something, some dumb." <laughs> like we're talking about marbles. Like where did this come from? We're just talking about my favorite movie. God damn it, it's vampires. God damn it, it's vampires. <laughs> my point is that it can be the stupidest thing that you argue about. And then it's so it's it's pride. It's pride. There's no reason to want someone to hurt themselves or even say something hurtful just because you want to make a point. And, and toxic fandom is a thing. We love things that have a fan base. We all have passion for something. That's what makes us nerds. That's what makes us great. Mm -hmm. Like everything, there is a limit um, to defending something. One of the best things, like, it, 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 this is like with simp culture and like white knighting and stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude, she's not going to fuck you. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. Like, the creators of your favorite show that you're white knighting to the death, they're not going to like give you a pat on the back no matter how much you love steven universe no matter how much you love star wars no matter how much you love the thing that you love it's not gonna fuck people, you they are not yeah they're not gonna fuck you they're not gonna give, give you that pat on the back for defending their honor because quite frankly they don't give a shit if someone insults their company oh no we're still making boatloads of money this person said we're dumb. Whatever are we going to do? Yeah, they don't care because it's right. It's it's all about the almighty dollar. I yeah. find out that any of you listeners are being toxic. I will personally show up to your house and shit in your yard. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a J Mac guarantee. <laughs> and you'll leave it. You'll leave a note on your door that says, "God damn it, it's vampires." Yes, you will know that I've been there. <laughs> God damn it, it's vampires. All right, guys, I think that's the end of the podcast. We want to thank you for watching and listening. Um, till next time, stay nerdy. Stay sexy. Always.